Okay, back to continue with our nematodes. So we know that this group is a very ubiquitous, very successful, very abundant uh, sort of uh, phylum, a lot of different species, a lot of ecology associated with them. We're going to focus primarily now on the what we call enteric parasites. These are the, the better known, uh, more familiar type of species because they directly affect humans. So they are parasites in our intestinal tracts, so enteric parasites. There's several, but I'm going to focus on these three for now. So Ascaris, Ascaris lumbricoides, uh, two species of hookworms, so uh, Ancylostoma and Nicator. So these are two species that that are common worldwide. Uh, one in, in Nicator is uh, abundant here in the in the New World, and then Pinworm. I don't know if you've heard of Pinworm, but Pinworm in, in Terobius. Uh, pinworm. If you've ever seen little kids and you know, maybe you travel to poor parts of Mexico or, or to uh, poor parts of Africa, poor parts of, of Asia, um, even, even in the United States, right? In areas of poverty, um, you see little kids always scratching their behind and poking back up in there. Um, a lot of that is caused by pinworm, right? So it's common, pinworms commonly affect, uh, you know, young humans, you know, children. Um, all of these, we typically associate with domesticated animals as well, cows, horses, pigs, cats, dogs. Um, and we typically associate these with uh, sort of unsanitary conditions, areas where there's a lot of uh, contamination of water supplies, of food supplies. Uh, we talk a little bit about the, the, the flatworms, that cycle, the fecal oral cycle. Uh, we see that again a lot with the, the roundworms. So that fecal oral contamination cycle, um, again, that uh, is going to be predominantly how these things get passed from host to host to host. So we begin with Ascaris. And once I start talking about all these worms, I don't want to make you all paranoid and, and I don't want you to, you know, stop eating what you normally like to eat. I just uh, this is to inform you. Um, just be aware of what's out there. Yeah. So uh, Ascaris is a... It can be a long parasite, a foot long. Um, it, it's a very abundant, very common parasite in most domesticated animals. Uh, most of you go to Albertsons, go to Walmart to buy your groceries, to buy you know uh, meat, things like that. But if you've ever had to slaughter your own food, uh, you fatten up that pig for 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 chicharrones and carnitas. And then you, as you're butchering, a lot of these will have these parasites inside. Um, it's an internal parasite, right? It can affect most vertebrates. It's a very, again, a very abundant, uh, very sort of resistant type of parasite. Remember, it's got that, that cuticle on the outside, on the outer edge. Uh, these can undergo that uh, cryptobiotic type of um, you know, quiescence, they just kind of shut down metabolically. So all this makes them for, makes a very, very hardy, very adaptable type of parasite. The eggs are very resistant to, uh, to, to being destroyed as well. So again, a common internal parasite. You see these in the intestines, a handful of parasites, a smaller male, larger female. And then again, uh, we see that, uh, again, that the, the fecal oral contamination cycle causing intestinal bloating, pain. Um, they can be quite severe in animals and, and even in humans, right? They can be so severe that they start to occlude. They clog up, they block that intestinal tract. And again, does not allow food or material to pass through. Um, yeah, that almost looks like noodles, right? But, but that is, uh, again, just an abundance of uh, nematode um, infection there, yeah. So Ascaris, Ascaris lumbricoides. So here, some sort of uh, surgical procedure. Some poor little child, you know, probably a third world country, um, is having worms removed, right? And that again is that 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 has to feel terrible. The the, the malnutrition, the anemia, the discomfort. I suspect pain the blockage of, of food, the trouble passing, trouble defecating, 
Um, so again, these are significant parasites, uh, but again, they can be killed, they can be removed. Um, but again, just, just be aware that they are out there. Uh, there's again, just, I'm not gonna get into all the details, but it's again, the contaminated water supply, um, the, the fecal sort of introduction of the eggs into the environment, and then sort of the re-ingestion of, of the larval form or the egg form. So the fecal oral cycle. Hookworms. So hookworms are, are, are quite interesting as well. They are like, they describe them as little vampires. They, they actually sort of bite down on the intestinal wall. They have these modified little sort of teeth structures. Um, they, they clamp down, they bite down, and they just start feeding, sucking on that blood. So Ancylostoma is basically the found in the old world. And Nicator, we say it's a new world because it's found in the eastern part of the U.S., Central America, South America. So we typically focus on Nicator uh, a bit more, but they actually are quite similar, both of these hookworms. Um, I don't know why they can call them hookworms. Uh, maybe it's the little structures that they have, the, the, the shape, look like little hooks, um, the little teeth. But again, the common term hookworm and I'm gonna upload an associated YouTube video that will elaborate a little bit on the effect that hookworm has had on, on poverty, on stunting growth, malnutrition, uh, difficult times concentrating. So having an impact on, on education and it just uh, a lot of stuff talking kind of as they describe the, the rural South, right? So I'll let the video kind of get into more detail with that. but. Um, I'm going to slow down here, right? As we have eggs in, in the soil, right? This is where it gets a little bit uh, more aggressive, I should say. So the hookworm doesn't wait for something to ingest it, right? The hookworm can, um, can shift away from that fecal oral cycle. They can actively go in and actually burrow into, into the body. So if you're a little microscopic hookworm, right, and you see a, a hair follicle, that hair follicle has to look like this huge cave, right? So makes it very easy to, for the hookworm to, to wiggle into these hair follicles, the pores in our body. And, and I don't know if you like to walk around barefooted, uh, but in areas where there's hookworm, it's a very easy way to get hookworm infections, right? So uh, you notice uh, the foot. So hookworms sort of burrow into the body. They burrow into the body. And uh, they do cause, depending on the situation, they can cause allergic reactions. They can cause irritation, inflammation at that site where, where they enter into the body. And these are evidences that, yes, there was a hookworm infection. And they don't stay very long in the, uh, you know, these little red arrows. They don't stay very long in this area, they will then kind of work their way into the lungs. And I don't know if you've ever been talking or you <coughs> you kind of cough up stuff and then it gets re-swallowed. So that is the way that they will work down into the intestinal tract. So again, taking matters into their own hands, being a little bit more aggressive than, than some of the others we've talked about. Yeah? And with that, I'm gonna stop this video um, there are two others I have to get into that will deal with uh, some interesting aspects. I don't know if I'll have time to do those today, uh, but I hope to get those up soon.